Hi guys, Victoria Paxton here. Thanks for stopping back by my YouTube channel. Okay, so first of all, subscribe if you haven't already. Like, share, that'd be great. All right, so let's get started. So today my reading is on Kaylee Anthony. Yeah, poor little thing. So she was born August 9th, 2005 in Orlando, Florida. Her mom, unfortunately, was Casey Anthony, who was born on March 19th, 1986. We all can't have decent parents, right? So Casey lived with her parents, George and Cindy Anthony, when her daughter disappeared. On July 15th, 2008, Kaylee was reported missing in a 911 call placed by Casey's mom, Cindy. So Cindy, who was Kaylee's grandmother and Casey's mother, told the 911 dispatcher that she hadn't seen her granddaughter in 31 days and that her daughter's car smelled like a dead body had been inside of it. So apparently what had happened was Casey's car had been towed. So I guess her mom went and got it out and it smelled like a dead body. Yikes. Uh, Cindy said Casey had given her um, many different explanations about what happened to, to Kaylee. Casey lied to the detectives and told Kay said that Kaylee had been kidnapped by a nanny on June 9th, okay, and that she'd been trying to get her back. And interestingly enough, she said, they said, you know, what's the nanny's name? And she said, Zanny, Zanny the nanny. What I found in the research part was that apparently Casey and her friends do Xanax pills, which are like, I don't know, like they calm you down almost I don't know <laughs> something like that um so it was ironic to people when she said Zanny the nanny <sighs> come on right yeah she said she was afraid to call the police your daughter's missing and you're afraid to call the police really hello does that not send up red flags come on so the last date that Cindy and George had seen Kaylee was June 16th of 2008 that's insane. I mean, that's just, utter, and then it, they didn't call it, call it in until the grandmother called it in July 15th. I mean, that's just, oh my God. So on December 11th, 2008, two year old Kaylee's skeletal remains were found with a blanket inside of a trash bag in a wooded area near the Anthony, Anthony's family home. That's so sad. Kaylee's mom, <clears throat> excuse me, Kaylee's mom, Casey, was charged with first degree murder in October of 2008. And this was even prior to finding the baby's body. She pled not guilty. Kaylee's death was ruled as a death by undetermined... Oh, so, okay. When they did the autopsy, they said that it was a death by undetermined means, but it was ruled a homicide. So they couldn't tell exactly how she was killed, but apparently she didn't just go to sleep and die on her own. The trial lasted six weeks. From May to July in 2011, the prosecution sought the death penalty and alleged Casey wanted to free herself from parental responsibilities and murdered her, da her daughter by administering, administering chloroform and applying duct tape to her mouth. Ugh. The defense team led by Jose Baez countered that the child had drowned accidentally in the family's pool on June 16th of 2008 and that George Anthony disposed of her body. Yeah, okay. The defense contended that Casey lied about this and other issues because of a dysfunctional upbringing, which they said included sexual abuse by her father. Wow. You know, there are two things that I can't stand, and that's when people play the race card when it's not necessary, right? Hey, now, if you've been someone's been prejudiced, you know, against you because of the color of your skin, then by all means, heck yeah, press that race card. But these people that only play the race card, you know, because they feel like it's going to get them off of a charge is BS. And people that say that they were sexually molested and it's BS, like this lady did. Like, come on. Jeez Louise. <sighs> okay. So the defense presented no evidence as to how Kaylee died. The defense challenged every piece of evidence the prosecution presented, calling it fantasy forensics. Yeah, that Jose Baez, he's a really good attorney. She was very fortunate to have him as her attorney. Casey didn't testify, go figure, 
On July 5th, 2011, the jury found Casey Anthony not guilty of first-degree murder, aggravated child abuse, and aggravated manslaughter of a child, but they found her guilty of four misdemeanor counts of providing false information to a law enforcement officer. So with credit for time served, she was released July 17, 2011. So she gets to murder her kid, and then, oh, right after the, right after the, yeah, right after the court date, she's out of there. So screwed up. And I know I'm supposed to stay unbiased and impartial, like I always say, but in this particular case, it was all over the news. Like, it was so evident that she did this, you know? A Florida appeals court overturned two of the misdemeanor convictions on January 25th of 2013. Wow, go figure that. So the four misdemeanor charges, they overturned two of them. Oh, my God. The not guilty verdict was greeted with public outrage and was both attacked and defended by media and legal commentators. Interestingly enough, the entire time this poor baby was missing, her mother was out with her boyfriend, out with her friends, drinking, partying, dancing. I mean, they had videotape of her. She didn't have a care in the world. She could have cared less that her daughter was missing. You know, obviously her daughter was not a priority to her. Yeah. So, like I said, this was always on the news. I always thought that the mom did it. Yeah. Okay. So, Kaylee came through. She was 20 some years old, the way I was seeing her, and she looked exactly like her mom. It was kind of like eerie how similar she looked to her mother. You know, she was a sweet young woman. We exchanged, you know, words here and there, pleasantries, and, you know, I said, I wanted to know if her mom killed her and what she knew. Okay, so she started talking about where she lived and how much her grandparents spoiled her and how much she adored her grandparents. She talked about um, her grandmother, her grandfather, her uncle, and apparently it was Jojo and Cece. She called her Grandpa Jojo and her Grandma Cece. Um, she said that her mom would get mad a lot at her grandma and grandpa because the mom would say tell her no to something and the grandma and grandpa would say yes <laughs> which i mean that's how grandparent you know come on she said there came a time when she started her mom started giving her medicine like before she went to sleep and it was something new but it stuck out to her and it wasn't anything that she realized when she was alive because she was so little but she said after the fact when she crossed over and she was able to kind of like reflect on her life. Yeah, she remembered that. That part was hard because she, it was like really upsetting, you know? It was upsetting to her. I mean, it was hard to watch. You know, it was hard for me to watch her. It was clearly upsetting to her. Yeah. I, I tell you, I don't think I will ever understand how any human being can take the life of a child. That's, yeah, anyway. Um, yeah, just, just talking about, like, how hurt she was. That, that was really hard. I said to her, I kind of intervened and said, maybe we should just stop here, you know. Because um, you could tell it was just, like, overwhelming to her. And she was like, no. She's like, no, I'm okay. I'm okay. So, you know, I told her I, did, I didn't want to hurt her. I didn't want to make this hard on her. Yeah, she had mentioned that it was... It was a struggle. So we continued on. She didn't understand at the time what was going on with her mom. Um, it seemed like her mom didn't have a lot of patience after that and just didn't want to spend time with her or be around her. So yeah, she said her mom would give her this medicine and then her mom, I guess, would go out. She saw after the fact. Um, and she said her mom didn't have patience anymore. Like she didn't want to play with her. She didn't want to spend a lot of time with her like she had used to. Yeah. So she said the last day she could remember her mom eh, put something over her mouth and, and nose. And that's the last thing that she knows. Yeah, that's crazy. She went on to say that she would check in like she saw where her body was laying. 
um, and she would check in and just kind of like look down. She would see it and know it was still there. You know, she said she checked in on her uncle. I believe she said his name was Lee, but I could be wrong about that. She checked in on her grandma and grandpa. She even checked in on her mom. Like, you know, that's her mom. Okay, so the next thing that she said to me really kind of blew me away. She said that she had forgiven her mom. You know, that she she had forgiven her. And she wished that her mom would be honest and come forward and tell what had happened to her instead of lying about it. Because I guess she's lying about it now, saying she didn't have anything to do with it. Um, you know, she said, uh, she went on to say that, you know, it's so sad that her mom doesn't talk to her dad at all. Her mom doesn't, her mom, Kaylee's mom, Casey, doesn't talk to her father, George, at all, which is Kaylee's grandfather. Um, and she said, you know, she said, I didn't understand any of this. I was too little, but once I got here and I was able to see everything, I understood and I forgave her because she's my mom. So yeah, that's, it was sad. Yeah, that one was, it's like I say, you know, it's another sad one, y'all, but it, it is. I mean, it's just so sad. Okay, guys, that about wraps it up. So be kind, stay safe, mask, gloves, hand sanitizer. We'll get through this. All right, take care. Bye.